Uh, hi everyone, my name is Harini Saladi. I'm a PM on the Microsoft LIST team. Um, I work on several different features within LIST, uh, but my main areas of focus are uh, the LIST app on web. Um, all of the updated notification flows that you're seeing, most importantly, evolving the LIST templates ecosystem. And um, that's what I'm here to talk to you about today. Uh, we'll use the next 10 to 15 minutes to uh, look at the journey that list templates have been on over this past year. We've had a lot of changes happen, uh, but we'll, uh, we'll mostly spend um, all of our time on the custom list templates feature, which is actually currently rolling out. It is 100% in first release right now and is slated to uh, move to prod over the next couple of weeks. So having said that, let's get started. Um, before I uh, dive into the feature itself, I wanted to kind of spend a little bit of time framing the vision that we have for the list templates ecosystem. Um, and because of the nature of the call, I'm assuming that uh, most of you know that uh, we started rolling out updated Microsoft lists experiences late last year. Um, and one of the updates that we made uh, was to give users a new way to create lists from a set of um, out of the box ready made templates um, that would help them jumpstart uh, common information tracking scenarios scenarios like issue tracking, asset management, travel requests, requests etc. And uh, these scenario specific templates also showcase the best of uh, best of what lists have to offer uh, to its users by way of formatting and other customization features. Um, now uh, this rolled out sometime like in November of last year, but um, after we rolled out one of the most frequent customer feedback we got was um, hey, uh, these scenarios are great, but our organization needs this other scenario and we wish we could make our own templates. Uh, so we kind of reacted, uh, tried to react quickly to that feedback and are now rolling out the custom list templates feature. Um, which will allow organizations to create repeatable list solutions, uh, not only in SharePoint, uh, but also in Teams and the list app itself. Um, and actually anywhere that list creation can happen. As we kind of work through the roadmap, our goal is to obviously create the right channels and opportunities for MVPs and all of our uh, uh, you know, passionate community to contribute to this ecosystem. Um, and uh, I mean, very similar to how we have list formatting samples and how community contributes to that. So please stay tuned as we figure out the logistics for that. And I'll be back in the next couple of weeks to kind of talk about what community engagement is going to look like in this space. Uh, but in the meantime, if you have any cool template ideas or if you have any feedback, please uh, feel free to reach out to me through DPNP channels um, or through VESA and uh, let's connect offline for sure. Um, so through this process, as we are kind of building out our template ecosystem, some of the principles that we are kind of hoping to uh, take care of is that they'll always be like all of the templates should be easy to uh, be referenced from any endpoint. We want to make uh, easy creation and publishing flows, and we also want to make it easy for admins to actually order and target users with the right templates from the catalog of templates that we're creating. Um, and uh, right now, if you are actually um, using list creation, then you should see this is the experience that you should be seeing. Uh, these are our eight out of the box templates and Teams also has like three more vertical specific templates. Um, now kind of switching gears to the custom list templates feature. Um, the water custom list templates, we already talked about it. It's essentially repeatable list solutions that your organization can create. Um, and all the users of the organization can actually see the custom template uh, show up as part of list creation flows. Um, right now, um, anybody can create the template JSON, uh, but only global or SharePoint admins can actually upload these templates for end user consumption. And um, uh, how does this work? Like, how can you actually create this templates? How can you upload them? Uh, it's a fairly simple process. We have kept it very consistent with the custom site templates experience. I'm sure Melissa was Melissa Torres, uh, who's the custom list uh, site templates expert, has come into these calls and talked about this already. Uh, so we've kind of kept the process um, consistent with that experience, and we have just extended some of these site template partial commandlets uh, to work for lists as well. Uh, so just like a quick gist. Uh, uh, I'll kind of run through the demo um, right after I talk about it, uh, but just a quick gist. Um, you can extract uh, the site script from any list using get SPO site script from list. Um, and then you can just run add SPO site script and add SPO list design to add that custom list template uh, to your organization. Um, it'll just show up in any list creation flows that you have set up. Um, and uh, optionally, you can also scope 
uh, who can actually see these templates using grant SPO site design rights. Um, so that's that's that. And um, we've already talked about this, so I don't want to go into this. Um, before I jump into the demo, I also wanted to quickly talk about what's coming up after the custom list templates. Uh, right now, uh, our team is working hard to make sure that out of the box templates that you're seeing right now, um, the, the ones that come from uh, Microsoft, can come packaged with flows and rules. Uh, for example, the issue tracker template that you see uh, will have a rule that notifies whenever someone is assigned to an issue um, and a flow that sends a due date notification if an issue is not resolved in time. And then um, if, like once that rolls out, the custom list templates will get the same capabilities as above. Um, and as I said, we have eight out of the box templates right now. We are uh, hoping to scale that out to as many as 40 templates over the rest of the year, and those will roll out slowly um, over like, you know, uh, week by week uh, as we kind of uh, have them available. And then finally, um, as uh, we scale up these out of the box templates, we will have like some sort of a gallery view or a different place where um, all of the templates that are, that are available for lists and as well as community um, contributed templates that users can browse through um, in one place. Uh, the logistics of that we are still figuring out, but that's the vision that we we do want to have a place where all of the list templates are available to you for um, you know uh, consumption and browsing. Um, so having uh, that's the end of my presentation, but I'll kind of quickly jump into my uh, demo. Uh, all right, so I'm I'm here. I'm on this employee onboarding site, and uh, the way to create lists from um, a site is to either do it on the um, homepage here. You can say plus new, and you have an option to create a list. You click on that, and you see this list creation experience. Um, and um, these are our out of the box templates, as I was talking about. And once the um, custom list templates feature rolls out, you'll have a second tab called from your organization, which will house all of the uh, custom templates templates that um, your organization has uploaded for you. Um, I already please ignore my test list one, but other than that, uh, we have like two other uh, templates called training sessions and workshop sessions, uh, which users can click on and use just like how they would use an out of the box template. Now, how did these templates uh, get here, right? Uh, so for that, if you are a SharePoint admin or a global admin, all you need to do is you kind of log into PowerShell as administrator, then you can connect to this particular site. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and connect to it. Uh, once I'm connected, um, there are like, as uh, as I showed you in my presentation, there are just three simple um, command lists to run. Uh, the first one, um, you can actually take any list um, and use get SPO site script from list and give the uh, URL of the list to actually extract the site script from it. Uh, I, because of how much time I have, uh, I'm not going to kind of run through that experience. I already have the uh, list, the site script extracted. Um, and this is what after extraction, this is what it's going to look like. It has all of the schema of that particular list. Um, it has the description of the list. It has all of the columns and any views that you have. Um, the one caveat is that uh, the extraction script does not um, support lookup columns. That's one thing that we are still trying to add support for. Um, so uh, that's the caveat and also newer features like rules and flows and anything else that is added on top of uh, lists right now is not supported. It's we are adding support to the extraction script as we go forward, uh, but right now it supports all of the columns, any calculated fields, um, all of the views that you have um, and everything gets extracted into a really cool and neat JSON format like this. Now once you have this JSON, uh, all you have to do is actually you can uh, here I'm just using get content to get the all of the JSON from that particular file and piping it through to add SPO site script. Um, I'm going to actually not call it test site script. Let's call it customer contacts. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and this uh, this particular um, um, a command that actually creates a site script from that particular JSON that I had already generated from the list. Uh, go ahead and create it. Then as you can see, it, uh, it generates an ID for that site script. So I'm going to copy that because this is what I need to create the list design. Uh, so go ahead and uh, I have already done this. So <laughs> 
so next step, once you actually do the uh, create the site script, you can go ahead and uh, create the list design. You can title it whatever you uh, you want. Uh, right now, whatever you show uh, right up as the title here, I'm going to say customer contacts. Um, and then you kind of take the ID of the site script from the previous step and add it in here. Um, and then you can describe it. Um, you can leave it um, like essentially this is this is the uh, variable that actually allows you to define what that particular uh, template is going to be so that your users can consume it. So I'll say uh, track all of your customer contacts from this list. Um, and then you can give a color. I'm going to say orange and an icon uh, list. It's already come with colors and icons that are uh, associated with them. Um, and then you can give it a thumbnail uh, that can live in the site assets library um, or from a different location. Um, and then just go ahead and add it in. And at this point, uh, after having run that particular command, uh, the list template should now show up on top of any of the list creation flows like I had previously shown you. So let's go ahead and uh, fingers crossed it shows up. Sometimes live demos don't work. There it is. Um, so I use the same image, but you can see I had added the customer contacts, uh, track all of your customer contacts from this list. Um, you click on it. Um, again, it is um, it is uh, the exact same way that um, you would use the out-of-the-box templates. As you can see, the preview doesn't have any data here, but uh, there is support to actually add sample data as well so that that data shows up here. Then you would just go use a template. Uh, and um, I'll go ahead and create the list from there. And there you have it. Um, so end to end being able to extract that um, the script from any list that you have uh, and then being able to uh, upload it so any of any of your organization's users can use it and then create lists from it. Um, so that was the uh, that was the end to end demo from my end. Um, have, I'm hoping there are questions in the chat that I can go ahead and answer while uh, Ruana is doing her presentation. Now, before okay, we go before to we go Ruana, to... yeah. let me ask a few questions because we yeah. do have time here. So, mm -hmm. Harini, there was a question related on APIs. So, mm -hmm. can we automate this from an API level? I can answer probably on that, or do you want to answer that? Uh, I think, like right now, um, most of the support is happening from a PowerShell commandlet perspective, and there are the existing APIs, REST APIs that we have will work as is, but we haven't added specific API support for all of the different uh, ones that I showed you right right now. So, for example, as I I think the uh, uh, add SPO list design might not have an API associated with it, uh, but we are working on creating that support over the next couple of weeks. So and that is on our backlog and it will roll out. And as it happens, we'll kind of communicate to the community. Excellent. So did you want That's... Did you want to add to that, Lisa? No, no, no. That was precisely what what I was about to say as well. So the, of course, some of this have a matching CSM APIs, but they're not in the Microsoft Craft yet. And then yes. we want to push them in Microsoft Craft, but all of that. So, um, but we're getting more and more clarity on that situation for sure in the docs and in the messaging. Thank you for that. Now, the other thing what I wanted to ask quickly, there was a question related on multilingual support. Um, so uh, anything what you want to comment on there? Sense? Multilingual support. What if you have multiple <gasps> languages in use? So uh, the thing with that is that like so essentially when you're creating the template, it has to be in a certain language um, and uh, the template would uh, then be used in that language only. And I think in order to have multi language support for that, you will have to do a little bit more work uh, with respect to adding the right and our out of the box templates have this, but for organizational, uh, the custom list templates, we don't have that support yet. I might have to kind of go back to my team and maybe answer that once I confirm with them uh, on what support we have in place for multi language support. Yeah, no worries on that one. Yeah, yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll, 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 uh, yeah we'll have to, uh, I think uh, Ralph was saying we have to save multiple languages. So, yeah, you'll have to be. For different geos, you might have to do like different uh, templates and say this is the English one and this is the German one. But I mean that's that's how that's a workaround. But I'm I'm kind of working with my team to figure out how 
um, like you know, multiple languages can be supported uh, through the custom list template feature. And Harini, if you have feature suggestions that uh, community members look and submit, do you have a place that you'd like to direct them to? Not right now. We're kind of figuring out the logistics for that. Uh, and like Vesa and I have been in conversation about how we can make that happen. Uh, so I'm hoping I can come back. Uh, once we figure that out, I'm hoping I can come back on the call like uh, in the next couple of weeks. And then, you know, we can uh, make that happen. Excellent. Absolutely. Yep, Priyan, sorry, take it away. <laughs> no worries. Thank you so much, Harini, for coming on to uh, show us a little bit about Microsoft Lists. Love to see more about this in the coming weeks as you have more to share. Mm -hmm.